holy is holy is you, Lord, because one day He has called us to life, to not this life, but to an eternal life, because we are all going to go, going to pass from this life. But the words of the Lord will never pass; it will remain forever. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. The ones who are present, the ones who are connected with us. I'd like to invite the brethren to open their Bibles in the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke. Luke. Luke chapter 7. We're going to read two verses. The verse 13 and the verse 14. Well, actually, 3. 13, 14, and 15. Luke 7, 13, 14, and 15. The word says the following. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up, and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Lord God, we want once again present our lives before your altar. Lord God, have mercy on us. We ask that through your word you may cancel men or any human intention, and but the voice of your Holy Spirit may flow in our hearts. Give our grace to be able to reach what is prophetic. We praise you in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. My brethren, we are before a text that, a text that is very well known. It speaks of a widow in the city of Nain. She had already lost her, her husband. And sadly, she was also bearing and caring her son to be buried. It was a difficult moment for that woman and the ones who were around her, the family. And in a certain moment of that, a sad moment, she was faced with the Lord. She fa was faced with Jesus. Jesus was coming and with another group of people, and they met. And the word says that he does exactly this, what we just read. He touched on the on coffin, and the dead came back to life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But cause, what calls our attention about this passage is that we see that there was there, there were there two types of crowds. One crowd was sad because of the death. They were sad, they were crying in anguish. And there was another crowd that was happy. Jesus was present among in the midst of the crowd they were had witnessed miracles they had witnessed supernatural things great wonderful things happy things seeing the operation of the lord sharing the ministry of the lord jesus miracles happening the blind seeing and they meet at that point now i open up a quote here in what uh, want to ask a question in what crowd are you how have you been I, have you been sad 
Have you lost many things? Or have you, have you been walking in joy, going through wonderful experiences with the Lord Jesus? Because Jesus is alive. He is in our midst. And He is still performing miracles. The miracles have not stopped. There is a people that has, that has rejoiced in the presence of the Lord. We have seen a world as being decadent, sad, no, giving themselves to the pleasures of these lives, this life, to the anguish. And we see today, if we open up, if we turn on the news, we see terrible things that we thought that we would never see, we are seeing. There are things that happen that we tell ourselves, is it really true? A sad moment that the world is going through, but while the world there's sadness in the world, while the world is suffering, is crying. Blessed be the name of the Lord, because there is a people that is being prepared to live in eternity, and they have seen every day the moving of the Lord, the operation of the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord in their lives. And we see here in this text that there was there a sad period, and in this period where there was a, a wake and things of this sort, it was the tradition of the time that people they would dress dress up, they would put on their best garments in order to participate on that. this funeral and they would dress up well so whoever looked from afar they would think these people are so well dressed that must be something good there when they and but when they came close they were, they could only see sadness and anguish it was crying my brother this uh, I bring when we bring this example to our days, the world is like this as well. They put attractive things before our eyes, and according to our eyes, it looks good. When we come close, it's just death and sadness. The world is just uh, a display, but in the presence of the Lord, it is real. But and when we come close, we feel the presence of the Lord, the love of the Lord overflowing in our lives. Don't be uh, deceived by appearance or, or what the world has offered. The things that apparently are good, the Bible says there are paths that, according to man's eyes, they look good, but what is their destination? Is death. The Lord just wants to warn us that there is a people that lives from victory through victory and joys from joys to joy that there is, there is a people that is jubilant that knows very well where we came from where we are and to where we are going blessed be the name of the Lord and the word says that the Lord there he stops that crowd and he sees he is move of great compassion to that uh, regarding that situation. And today, it's not different. You who entered here tonight in the house of the Lord, I don't know what's your problem, what you've been going through, or your trials and tribulations. I don't know the giants that you have faced. But the Lord tonight, He looks to you, to each one of us, with a gaze of compassion, with a gaze of love. He's not here to judge you. He's not here to judge you, even le much less us. But he is here to give you a message. He wants to touch your life. If you, by any chance, you are spiritually dead, like this young man, there's a crowd here that is walking with Jesus, and he wants to touch in your life. He wants to say, get up and leave 
this life here live this life here with joy with hope because the victory is already on the hands of the church when the moment we close our eyes because this is going to happen to each one of us when we close our eyes to this earth this life we're going to open our eyes in eternity and that's the hope of the faithful church and today he's telling you like I just said I don't know your situation but he's telling you do not cry he is the comforter the Holy Spirit of the Lord is our comforter how many times we come up to the house of the Lord we are sad beaten bitterness discouraged many times but many times the Lord use a brother or sister use a prophet and his Holy Spirit speaks to our heart and that sadness just vanishes you know why because we walk we are a crowd that walks with Jesus we are walking in a straight line in, towards eternity and the Lord gave a spiritual gift gift and the spiritual gift said the following I saw a woman that was divided between the world and the church and tonight the Lord wants to reveal himself to her as the Savior and he's asking a question the question is for a woman but the Holy Spirit wants to ask this question to each one of us the question is the following do you want to go to eternity or not if I ask you to raise your hand everybody's going to raise their hand because surely we all want to stay to be in eternity right but if you still don't have assurance of your salvation if you are not sure of eternity the Lord is still saying if yes choose Jesus choose Jesus your Savior the Bible says that remember the text it's before you life and death choose therefore life so that you may live blessed be the name of the Lord choose therefore life so that you might live if you're still not sure of your salvation if you're not sure that when you close your eyes and Jesus calls you uh, when he returns that today is a day of salvation day is a day in which he wants to do according to this youth he wants to touch in your life but it is interesting that Jesus healed in many different ways he also resurrected in many different ways but this was a different way because Jesus could have done what he did to Lazarus come up rise up and walk get out of this tomb but he touched he touched on the coffin and now I ask why did he touch on the coffin why didn't he just call use his words my beloved here Jesus touched on that coffin just to prophes prophesy later on when he was he touched on that wood on the coffin he touched his hand and then on the cross of Calvary he leaned his body his entire body and shed his blood you know why to tell you get up and walk because he through his death through through the wood he gave us life he died for our lives he has the key of victory on his hands the key of death death no longer haunts the church anymore because that we know and we are sure of our eternal life and blessed be the name of the Lord for this and that's why when he touched on that wood he brings us life and tonight he wants to bring to our memories this sacrifice that Jesus died for your life for my life he died to save us he died so that we might have life and life in abundance and eternal life the Lord also gave another spiritual gift it was a man that dreamt about his death and that caused great anguish to him 
But tonight, the Lord desires to give him security of eternal life and to confirm that this dream that you had it came from the Lord to show your situation that in the dream, you know, you who who you have the, you had a dream, you want he wants to awake you. He wants to awake you so that you may get out of death into eternal life. In the same way that he did with that youth, this youth was already going to be buried, to be you know, six feet underground. And, but the Lord intervened, and he wants to do the same with you. He wants to cross your path, intervene, so that, that you don't die. You are going to die and lose salvation. In your dream, you died. You did not go to eternity. But the Lord wants to give you another chance. He wants to say you, say to you, get up, my, my child. This is not place. Your place is not divided between the church and the world. The Lord wants you to study up your steps and renew the commitment that once you let go. The Lord wants to wake you up and give you a blessing and the renewal of salvation and to tell you that He is the Lord of hosts. He is the one that has a key to death. He is the one that has eternal life to each one of us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord also has given a, a revelation. He reveals to a woman that is unable to surrender herself to the Lord. She has a trauma that she had in her life years ago. And she associates this trauma with the gospel. My brethren, we don't know what you went through. We don't know. But I want to tell you one thing. The Lord is calling you to life. He is calling you to life. Let's sing the song, just the, the chorus of this song. He calls you to life. He calls you to life. He's not calling you to remain with doubts of what happened in the past. Think of the present. Think even. Passar sua eternidade, trauma nenhum pode impedir a igreja de marchar uma eternidade. Ele quer te dar uma libertação essa noite. Só o coro, só o coro. To touch your life. He wants to remove the sadness from your heart, the lack of hope. And then he came, he touched on the coffin, and they got up and they stopped. And the, the ones who were carrying the coffin stopped, and, and he said, Take a man, I said to you, I arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Here, the Lord is, he will, Lord, once again, wants to call you to life. He wants to tell you, rise up 
and begin to speak about the deeds and testify of what the Lord is going to do in your life from this day forward. For me, this decision that you have made tonight of giving yourself to the Lord, He wants you to give your testimony. And here in the house of the Father and the Mother, the Church, typify the Mother, He gives, He presents you. Be a part of this people. Walk with Jesus that has joy, that has hope. We have open arms to receive you and so that we can may together participate on what the Lord has the best, which is the best for you. May the Lord bless us with your word. Let's sing a song.
Lord has an eternity ahead of us. He went to that cross and suffered for our lives. Don't leave it for tomorrow. glorification to the Lord. Lord, I want to glorify you. I want to praise the Lord because one day, Lord, we were in the world and our life was being counted towards death. But today, you brought into our presence so that we can count our life towards eternal life. So that one day we can be with you, Lord, and be face, up, face to face with our God. Glorify, Lord, because it's good, Father, to be in your presence because it's good to feel the special care of the Lord towards us for seeing this beautiful and wonderful love and faithful because the Lord loves us in, in an unconditional way in such a way that he gave, you gave your only begotten son to die on the cross for us to give us the, the right to this eternal life this so great salvation you have prepared for the ones, Lord, that have sought you, Lord, and served you in the spirit and in truth. Lord, we praise you and thank you because you are everything for us. You are our greatest gift. You are our Father from eternity, Lord. You are the one, Lord, that has loved us in a very special way. Lord, we are... We don't have enough words to praise you, Lord. How good, Lord, it is to serve you, Lord. How good, Lord, is to feel this true joy that only the only you, Lord, can give us this true peace that only only peace that only you can give it, Lord. Because of everything you have done, because you are faithful, because you never allow your people to go back home with empty hearts, Lord. But you are the one that when you went into our hearts, you visit us and speak to us in a special way, Lord, because you love us in a true way, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for everything, Lord, for everything you have done for us. We are not deserving, Lord, but you are the one who loves us and has not looked to our flaws, to how small we are, Lord, but you are the one who embraces our soul and makes us feel that we are truly loved by you, Lord. How good, Lord, it is to serve you. How good, Lord, it is to, su to see the deeds of the Lord in, in, towards our lives. How good, Lord, it is to feel this joy that you place in our hearts for the doors that you have opened to your people, to your church, for the care that you have had with your people, Lord, because our tears our tears of joy because we serve a mighty God that can do all things. We praise you, Lord, in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may, be, may rise up. We are going to be closing the service and presenting our lives before the Lord once again. Let's be your name, Lord. Oh God, we want to uh, raise your name high up for the deeds, your deeds towards our lives, because you take took us out of the darkness and placed us in the presence of the Lord, which is light. We want to praise the Lord and thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts. In the same way that your servant just prayed, we prayed. Pray that we do not deserve such great love 
there's so great mercy but you were the one who loved us first that's why we praise your name for this night in your presence and to know Lord and leave this place with the assurance that we're going to live with the Lord forever Lord so that this message and this praise and everything Lord that was involved with the service may come before the altar of the Lord that you may receive Lord as a sweet smell to you Lord we praise you and as for the blessing of the Lord upon our lives give us Lord a night filled with joy and uh, resting in sleep and that tomorrow once again we may see your wonders wonders in my life being done we pray already in the name of Jesus amen the church may be seated I finish once again our service of glorification to the name of the Lord if by any chance you identify yourself when your spiritual gift and you may need a clarification raise your hand we our sons and deacons are going to go towards you to pray with you so so that you may leave this place with a complete blessing is there any other message to all the peace of the Lord.